We've got these 5x2s here. These 5x2s are all going to be going in here as the rafters. So we're going to be putting them right up alongside. Putting them right up alongside each of these. We've got these notched out here. Make it nice and easy for us to slot them in. And then they're going to rest. The bottom lip of them will rest on the top lip of that steel. Exactly the same as those ones at the back have there. Really, really solid, nice and strong. I'll be up onto there like that. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be. Uh, what we're going to be doing now: running them and cutting them in. So you can see what we did. We pocketed out a little bit and left a left something for it to sit on, just like this, the whole way along. So we'd slide it in this way, lever it up, hammer it in, and then we've timber locked it up in here at three points or two points, depending on how much rafter, old rafter we've got. So we've done five of them, and we've got another five to do. It's good. And as quick as that, we have the rafters in. So we're going to be doubling up some of these rafters so that they have got space for a V-Lux, because you double them up, but we're not going to do that until the roof has been stripped and refelted and battened and all the rest of it. We, we double up after that. And we're also going to build a dwarf wall on this steel, which will prop everything up. It's pretty level, actually, if you look at that. That is pretty level, but there are a couple of that are just ever so slightly under and the easiest and quickest and best way to do that is to build a wall off that steel which we know is perfectly flat and raise the wall off there and, and, and kind of wedge it up so it's perfectly plumb. So we'll take some very accurate measurements for that and then shove that up there as hard as we can off that steel. And that's it, we've just got one last one to do coming straight down into here and it's done. So we've just finished, we're back after the weekend, we've just finished putting these final three posts in and now we're just putting this dwarf wall in here. So we've put a sole plate the whole way along and now we're putting these little ones in here. I don't know if you can see but there's a big old bow in it at the minute, which is fine because what we do is we prop them up and we get it nice and level so we make sure that the roof is perfectly flat and square and level against that steel beam there. So. We're going to cinch those up, we're going to slot them up like that and cinch them up, up into there. So that'll get nice and strong. So we've just put a post in here and a post in here and we'll brace across and we'll also then it, it'll get, allow us to make an opening for the, uh, the hatch into the loft which we've now boarded out there so you can see we've uh, boarded out the loft. So we're cutting them at an angle and then slowly propping them up and we're getting them more and more level. You can see that dip there, we're just getting that out. So what we're doing is we're doing them at 800 and then we're filling in the one in between. So we did this one and then filled that in and you just kind of slowly work your way along and move them. And fill in the gaps because it's quite out.
So what we've done is we've propped it and wedged it. Bang on level there. Ooh. Nice and level now. This whole thing. Touching on all of them. That's really good. We're happy with that. It looks really nice. Very straight. And the roof line as well. I mean, it's impossible for you to see on camera, to be honest, but all of these rafters are touching and it's perfectly level, perfectly uh, straight. So we're just finishing these noggins. So we've made the hatch there for the opening. These are all nice and level and flat now. So it's good. What we ended up doing is we got this post here. We deliberately cut it really long. We put it up into the web of the steel, which is nice and set and solid. That's not going anywhere. Then we braced it up against this portion of the timber. And then we wedged it in. And that wedge, by hitting it there with a lump hammer and up there, so we hit it this way and that way, we pushed this little wall out to get it perfectly flat and level and square. So it's good. Really solid. So we have marked out exactly, we spoke with the client, marked out exactly where we want the timbers for the V-Luxes. They've gone for MK06s, so they're nice and wide. They're 780 wide. So we've put the joists here, the 2x6s, we put them at 800 wide between there and there. And the same on this side, between there and there. And now what we're going to do, we obviously know that's 800 for the, um, for the bottom timber and the top timber. And now we're just going to chop these bits out of here. You'll see what I mean. But yeah, time to install the V-Luxes. Well, the gaps for the V-Luxes. And as quick as that, we've got two V-Luxes in there. So they're 800 wide at the top and the bottom. Two timbers at the top, two timbers at the bottom. It's as simple as that, really. Very, very strong. We've put loads of screws and nails in there, so it's not going anywhere. It's very, very sturdy. There's a little bit of twist on this timber, which is why this is out. These are all cut square, but you can, I don't know if you can sight down the timber on this and just see, but there's a little bit of twist in it. So we've put some extra bracings on this side and we've put them in here as well with these timber locks as well, because some of these timbers have just got a bit of twist on them. But you know, it's a natural material. There's nothing you can do to stop that happening. You just got to go with it and uh, make the best of it. So those are the V-Luxes cut. 